One of the core use case of large language model is knowledge retrieval. And there are a lot of tutorial about how can you build Chatterways PDF or Chatterways website already. However, one problem I noticed is that almost all of those systems are useful, but a bit boring. For example, even though your team spend weeks and days creating really well written documentations with images, GIFs, and videos. But when those Q&A answer the question, it normally just answer in plain text, which is still useful, but a lot less useful and engaging than the content like those ones. And in some cases, text just simply didn't convey the message. For example, for an image like this, it's very hard to communicate with just text. So rich media is definitely a very important part of knowledge retrieval. And the reason why those Q&A apps can't respond in image is because we didn't feed any image data to large language model. Let's take website as an example. Normally, there are two types of data the scraping service return. It's either text or raw HTML file. And most of the time we choose text because it's very clean. So the large language model doesn't have much noise like the raw HTML file would have. But the problem is it removed all the links, including the reference link as well as image URL. And for PDF file, it's the same case. Most of the PDF data loader just simply extract text and ignore all the image file. So in most cases, we simply didn't feed any image URL data to the large language model. So it can't retrieve any. But it's totally possible to extract both text and reference link like image as part of context. That's why I want to show you a case study of how can you build a large language model Q&A bot that can respond with image reference. And Solution Explorer is basically turn all the content into clean markdown format. If you don't know what markdown is, it's a lightweight language for creating formatted content. For example, you can use hashtag with text to define a title, and you can also use certain syntax to insert an image. So with markdown format, we can still keep the structure of the documents in a very clean way. And on the other side, we can also use markdown format to display the data as well. And that's exactly how ChatGPT is displayed different type of format like table or code. And I will show you an example of how can we turn the raw HTML file to clean markdown format that has both text and image URL in structured way so that the large language model can use those data to return rich response back like this. So let's get it. As always, let's open a project folder in Visual Studio Code. And there will be four steps. Firstly, we script the raw HTML file of the website, and then we'll convert the HTML to Markdown, which should include all the image URL. And then we will create a vector index from those Markdown data. And in the end, we will let large knowledge model to build a Q&A chain. And the first thing we're gonna do is create an .env file to store the API key. And if you don't know what browserless is, it is a popular service that people use for scraping website. So once you create an account on both services, you can just put this API key here. And next, let's go back to the app.py and we'll first need to import a list of different libraries that we're gonna use and load the environment variables that we put in .env file. And if you haven't installed those libraries, you can click on this top right corner and do pip install HTML to text, langchain, llama index, openai, python.env, and beautiful soup4. Once you did it, we can go back and implement the first function, scripts the raw HTML from the website. So we will create a function called script website, pass on URL, create a header, as well as define the body structure. So we will pass on URL element selector, where we just want the body. And once we did that, we will convert this body request into JSON format and send a post request. And once we get the response from the API endpoint, we will need to do some parsing to extract the raw HTML. Once we did that, that should return the HTML stream. So let's try this. All right, it returns the HTML file successfully. But as you can see, the raw HTML is very messy and has a lot of information that we don't really need. And so if we just pass this information to the large language model, it probably won't produce any meaningful results. That's why we want to do the next step, which is convert the HTML to the markdown. So I will create this function called convert HTML to markdown. And we will use a library called HTML to text, which is a library that can automatically convert HTML to markdown format. So we will define the converter and also set ignore links to be false because we do want the links to be kept and then run the converter. So this function should be able to convert the messy HTML into clean markdown. Let's try this. Okay, as you can see, the result is a lot better after we did this cleanup. And it does kept all the image URL like this one. And we can use some website like Markdown Live Preview to test it out whether the outcome works. So I can try to paste to the Markdown Preview. And you can see like the image has been successfully loaded, which means if we pass this information to a large language model and ask it to generate answer, we should be able to display those images as well. However, there are some caveats. For some website, convertible markdown doesn't have absolute URL for the image assets. So they might have something like this. 
For those situations, we will need to create new functions that can help turn those URL into proper ones. And the way we're going to do that is I will create one function called get base URL. It will try to extract the domain from the URL that we try to scrape. And then we'll try to convert those relative URL in the HTML to the absolute URL that we will need. And we'll use a library called beautiful soup, which allow us to filter and choose different HTML tags and modify it. So we'll run some for loop for all the image tags in the HTML file, we'll try to get the source URL. And if the source URL start with HTTP or HTTPS, then we will skip and continue. But if it is not, then we will try to convert that URL to the absolute URL that we will need. And we'll repeat the same process for the source link in the image tag as well as data source as some websites do use data source tagging step. And we'll do the same thing for the link as well, just in case. And then we'll return the update HTML. So those functions should be able to help us convert all those image URLs to the proper one that we need. And in the end, I will just create one function to bring all those things together. Uh, so called get markdown from the URL. And if you try to use this function, and you will see all the URL will be passed properly. But this is just one example. For different websites, they do have different type of structures. So you might need to make some more adjustment to making sure the markdown format is actually clean and nice. All right, the next step is create a vector index so we can do similarity search. And in here, I want to use the Llama index. The Llama index is an open source library that provides a lot of different data loaders. So for example, it allows you to load data from Airtable, Asana, and many other things very easily. And they also provide a list of very useful features for you to manage vector index. For example, it allows me to modify and add new data into existing index without recreating the whole index from scratch. So it will be more cost effective. And on the other side, if I have a lot of different types of documents, it can automatically break down a pretty complicated question into sub questions that query different documents and in the end bring them together into one answer. And for our purpose, I will use the most basic function of Llama index, which is create a vector index and retrieve information. Let's create a function called generate answer with two inputs, the user query as well as the vector index we create above. So the first thing we will define a data retriever that can get a list of relevant nodes and nodes to some extent is like the relevant documents, but it also have things like metadata and other other stuff. But in this case, we only need a text. So I will do this to just extract the text data. So this should give us all the relevant information about this user query. And then we will give those contacts to large language model like GPT 3.5 to generate answer. So I will define the model and create a prompt template. You are a helpful assistant above with some context. Please answer the question with all the rules below. Answer the question only based on context provided. Do not mix things up and answer the question in a helpful manner that's straight to the point with clear structure and all relevant information that may help users answer the question. An answer should be formatted in Markdown. And if there are any relevant image, video links, they are very important reference data, please include them as part of answer. And I'm using the new launching expression language here. It's basically the same as you create an LLM chain component, but this new expression language just has simpler syntax. And once it's finished, I will return the response. So this is pretty much it. Let's try it out. So I will try to use this Webflow help doc as an example, where it has reference link as well as image and GIF. So I will load this URL give a query, how can I create a Webflow app and use all the functions that we defined above. So let's try this. I will do Python app.py. All right, I get this response back and I can copy paste the response here into a markdown preview. So the answer here include both the text as well as a GIF here. So the content is much more engaging. This is how you can extract clean markdown format with image reference data from website. And in terms of PDF file, it's basically the same thing. We can convert those PDF into structured markdown format. And there are libraries actually doing this called SPOST, which allow us to convert a PDF file like this into a structured markdown format with image reference as well as extract image file. However, this library is not free. It actually costs around $1,000 per year to use. If you do want to use it, I do have an example here about how you can extract clean markdown content with this library. I'm also pretty keen to explore whether we can create an open source version. So if you really want this PDF to markdown library, please comment below, let me know. So this example of how you can create a knowledge retrieval app that return not just text, but also rich media like this. And once you have this markdown, you can either create a front end by yourself or use library like Streamlit to quickly create a UI wrapper. I'm really keen to see what kind of interesting apps that you start building. If you do enjoy this content, please consider giving me a subscribe and I see you next time.